blindness There is no sight You'd see further if you'd only close your eyes In unconsciousness I can find peace Inside prison walls I can find release There is a place that I have seen Somewhere between waking and sleeping Down at the water's edge Somebody waits for me Is it too late for me? My passion for fashion, I guess, it started from a, a very early age. Um, I'm the son of immigrant parents, and um, I think immigrants have this thing where they like to show or eat how well they're, they're doing or they were doing. So um, we were brought up in a kind of a small environment where we were the only kind of Italians around. We were the only foreign people around. So it was very important that we always dressed well. It was very important that when we went to Sicily, um, we had clothes for traveling in, we had clothes for church, we had clothes for, you know, Sundays, that kind of thing. So it, we were always taught that we had to look um, and dress the part. And I guess it, it was that really from an early age, I was aware that clothing was important and it was something that I liked. It's something that I'd always seen, um, something I'd, uh, you know, my, my grandmother, my aunts were always embroidering, they were always uh, crocheting, that kind of thing. So it was always around me. I was studying to do medicine and um, because it's what my parents wanted me to do. Um, and then one day I just thought it's really not what I want to do. So I completely changed everything. And, um, and I got my grades. I went to art school for a year to do like a foundation course. Um, and then I applied to Central St. Martins because all my heroes had been there. And it was kind of like, you know, in, in England, I guess, and in the world, it was the place to go. So um, that's really how it started. Um, <laughs> kind of strangely enough, it was something my parents weren't happy about. You know, I remember my father saying, it's not a man's job, you know. Uh, you know, a man doesn't make clothes and, um, and so it was very hard obviously to convince him and, and after a while he kind of began to understand. Where are you taking me? Before I went to St Martin's I got a job for John Galliano so I started to work there um, then I got into St Martin's so I was doing St Martin's during the day and Galliano in the evening and at weekends and holidays and, um, and at the same time, I was doing things, I was styling for a magazine called The Face. So I would then send things home to my mother and say, you know, please show dad what I'm doing. And, um, and then I'd call her and say, did he say anything? And she said, no, 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 he didn't say anything to me, but you know, this morning I saw him showing the milkman. <laughs> so I think it was one of those things where I think he had to get to grips with it. It was something that obviously didn't, didn't figure in his world. Working with John was probably the most influential and probably my greatest learning curve because he is, he's like, a, he's, he's like an explosion in a firework factory. You know, there, his mind is everywhere and he's aware of everything. It was a brilliant way of learning how to kind of be as creative as you wanted to be, but at the same time, it's kind of like be commercially successful um, and, and you know working with a master like John was you know it's probably the, the best thing that could have happened to me. When I, I graduated my degree collection was bought by a couple of stores in London and I got lots of press as well so all of a sudden there were articles coming out um, Lucinda Chambers from Vogue was commissioning me to make pieces for shoots that kind of thing and then we had production to do obviously for my graduation collection and and it's kind of like and, and during those months all of a sudden everyone was excited about the possibility of a show so it started really from nothing 
it was kind of like overnight thrown in at the deep end. I'm very lucky because I have my Italian Sicilian background um, which is ultra feminine and it's very respectful towards women and that kind of thing and it, it's it's about craft, it's about embroidery, it's about the fineness of garments, if you like. And then I have my English side, which is much more strict, it's much more about tailoring, it's much harder, I guess, um, when compared to the Italian side. So I'm kind of like this strange Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. There is that mix of the two, and I think it, it's that which is probably um, how you would describe what I do. My inspiration really is from everywhere. It's kind of like, you know, I walk down a street and my eyesight isn't that great and I don't really wear my glasses, but in my head and, and from what I think I see, it's, it's probably slightly more interesting than it might be in reality. And so um, I like to see the way people move sometimes not seeing who the, who the person is necessarily. It's kind of like I see a silhouette and that silhouette might inspire me. The way that someone walks, the way that someone moves, the way that someone wears color. And I tend to travel a lot. That it's kind of like you try and find a correlation of what's maybe happening in Italy to what's maybe happening in England to what might be happening in Mexico to what might be happening in Japan. It can be absolutely anything. But one thing I prob that probably is consistent in my work is that I tend to think from the inside out, so I do take into consideration underwear a lot. I do take into consideration how, um, as a human being, we dress for ourselves. That's always an important factor, I guess, in what I do. So it's kind of like, you know, whether I'm designing underwear or not, you know, the idea is that the inside of a garment is just as beautiful because should you be unzipped, should someone see your your coat or your jacket hanging on a hanger it's the idea that it's just as beautiful on the inside that, as it is on the outside my mother was a very big inspiration she was very much that kind of like old school sicilian wife that stayed home didn't really go out very much um, but was extremely modern in her outlook was very aware was very aware of what was happening musically, was very aware of what was happening kind of like, you know, around her in the country. That's probably one thing that is a very Berardi thing, the idea um, of a little piece of sculpture in a jacket, um, because to me, it's kind of like, I think that's the test of a, of a designer, um, how, how good they are at constructing a jacket. Because I think it's kind of like with lots of things, you can get away with certain things and you can kind of hide things. But I think with a jacket, if it's not perfect, you see. The Parati woman, I don't know, she's, she's quite strong-willed, she's tough. Um, she's super sexy and she's aware of her femininity um, and if I have to correlate that to people then you know we go from a Victoria Beckham to uh, the Queen of Jordan um, to a Sarah Jessica Parker um, to a Beyonce to a Lady Gaga you know it's kind of like it is various women but I think they're all very strong women style you can't buy fashion you can you know fashion is just a series of um, if you like things that we think we should have every season um, but I think style is something that is on the inside The most shocking was probably the first one I did when I came to Milan, which was, um, it was like a, a collection that was based on um, Lucretia Borgia, and if she was a punk. 
and um, I think it, it was very different to what people were used to seeing <laughs> in Milan. It was very gothic. It was kind of like a whole production, you know, a big wax catwalk that was in the shape of a cross. We had altar boys that were holding different um, shaped lights um, to guide people to their seats. We had a huge incense burner that was huge that was kind of like, you know, um, it was swinging over the catwalk uh, with incense. We did clothes that had tiny lights that lit up in, you know, it's kind of like different sequences. It was everything that you could possibly put into a collection. Showing in Paris, we did um, we did a show where we had um, parachute dresses and you know latex boots with no heels and whatever, um, and that was really completely successful. It's kind of like you know I think just the, just the press on those parachute dresses and the heelless boots was phenomenal, you know, and it kind of went across the board. So that was extremely successful. Another one we did in London, which was based on voodoo. Um, which was, it was an amazing atmosphere. It was an amazing venue called The Roundhouse, um, which no one had used for probably 10 or 15 years. Um, and we built a set in there that there was fire um, and all sorts. We had a, a DJ, but we also had um, African drummers that were drumming out the beat. Um, we had Prince, who was there, um, which was amazing for me because he was like one of my idols. Um, and we had, you know, girls that were, had headdresses with candles in where the wax was dripping all over them, you know, there were, it, it was everything and more, but it was an amazing, amazing atmosphere. I don't really know how to judge success, um, and probably success is when I'm told we have to remake a dress, another five of the same because everybody wants it. Everyone knows that I love high heels and we always did heels and they were always extremely special heels like in the past we did um, shoes where they were 18 karat gold but even the heel was made of gold. We did shoes where the heels were mother of pearl like years ago. We did shoes made of glass so it's kind of like shoes were always I guess part and parcel of the Barati look um, and so that season I decided no heels and so we took it to the extreme. Um, and I guess, I don't know, it, it took people's imagination. I think people were kind of like afraid and it, it was bizarre. The first show when they came out over the music, which was extremely loud, you could hear people gasping, you know. And then Victoria Beckham wore a pair to her perfume launch and I think it, and then from there they were kind of everywhere. It was kind of like a sensation. To me, manufacturing and, and quality is just as important as anything else, I think, if not more so. The worst thing is when you see something by a designer or by a house and you see that it's not made beautifully and you think, it's kind of unfair because what are you really paying for? You know, the idea with clothing is that it's kind of like not only should it look good visually, but it should be made just as beautifully. My heroes are kind of all over the shop. You know, I love Galliano obviously because he's like my mentor. Um, and then I, I adore Azadine Alaya. Um, you know, I love certain designers for certain things and certain things that they achieved. You know, it's kind of like a complete respect for an Armani who has created like probably one of the biggest empires ever. You know. Um, for a Valentino whose work was so beautiful and so perfect. Um, then I loved, for instance, Charles James from the past, who was American. You know, I loved Ozzy Clark, who was English. Um, I was having dinner recently with Vivian Westwood, and it's kind of like, you know, and she's amazing simply because of who she is and what she's achieved, and what she still does and what she still tries to achieve. Um, so it's kind of like, I appreciate people for Maybe those things that I guess um, they either invented or those things where they have become synonymous to their work.
Well, Fashion Channel, thank you for having me and thank you for listening to me. And um, I hope I haven't bored you and I hope I've bought something, um, something new or interesting um, uh, into, into your line of vision. And um, I hope to continue to see myself and what I do um, on World Fashion Channel. Thank you.